Welcome to the Beers Law Lab. Here I'm going to show you how I want you to analyze your data. In the first column I have a sample data set here. We have five trials, our five concentrations, and our blank at zero. And then I have five more columns with my data. The calculations we're going to make, we're going to do some means. I'm going to put them in this column so I already have it set up. We're going to do some standard deviation since we have multiple uh, measurements at each trial and then we're going to calculate a mean deviation and I wrote average so I'm going to change that to mean. Alright, to take the mean we're going to type in the use the function uh, we're going to hit equals and we are going to write the word average put in a parentheses and then highlight the data we want to take an average of end your parentheses and hit enter one more time, we hit the equals, we type in the word average. You can see you have a couple different averages, we're just taking a normal average. Uh, highlight the data you want, close your parentheses. You can see it tells you what the calculation will be if you want to preview. And then we're going to drag that and drop it down to the next couple to finish the column out. You can see when I drag it down, it changes the cells that it's taking an average of. There's B5 to F5. The original is B4 to F4. So when I'm going to click this again and drag it down, and that completes the means for the data set. And I want to type this mean absorbance. I'm going to resize my columns here. And then let's do some standard deviation. I've just written STDEV here. Sorry, a little more formatting. We're going to use another function here, equals STDEV. See there are four different standard deviations we can take. Uh, the A is when you have text. Uh, and then you can do standard deviations of a sample, which is the first one, or standard deviation P, which is of a population. But we are just doing of a sample. So again, you highlight the data you want, and you just hit enter. And obviously, the standard deviation of all zeros is zero. But we can click this now and drag it down. So let's try it one more time. STDEV, parentheses. It will try to predict what you want. So if you like what is predicted, you go ahead and hit enter. Select your data. And we can click that again and drag it down to finish the column. Now I want a mean deviation. So we're going to take the average. Equals average. And I want all of the standard deviations except zero. Zero is not really one of our data points. We were using it to calibrate the spectrophotometer. So we're going to leave the zero out. And we can see our mean deviation is 0.048. Next we're going to graph this. We're going to graph the entire data set. Um, and then we're going to graph just concentration versus mean absorbance. So that we can add some error bars on there using our standard deviation. Graph the entire data set. Google Sheets doesn't really like to graph everything. If I try and graph it, this is what happens. Google Sheets seems to be obsessed with column charts, so we change that to a scatter plot, and we still see that all of our data is kind of lined up. Not quite right. So even if I try and put the x-axis in here and tell it exactly what I want it to put on the x-axis, it's still graphing a bar graph. You can see there are no vertical uh, grid lines. So let's just delete that and start over. So I need to put all of my data into two columns. So the way to do that is to just copy and paste, Command C, Command V, and put your concentrations in five times. And then copy and paste each trial's readings next to the correct concentrations. So there's copy, paste. Highlight, Command C, Command V, and one more time. There we are. Now we have all the data in two columns, and 
Google Sheets likes this a lot better. So we can highlight everything here and insert chart. Try to do a line chart, but scatter plot's the next one available. So we're going to try it there. It looks like we have a nice linear trend here, but let's make sure everything is nice. So let's customize. Let's give this a title. We're not graphing trial one. We're graphing all of our absorbances. So I'm going to type absorbance in the title. And then I need to change the vertical axis as well from trial one to absorbance. Now, if I click on series, I can add my trend line. I need to change the color just because I'm going to do some green here. Uh, we're going to show the R squared and we're going to use the equation as our label. And then I like to click on the chart area and maximize it a bit so that my equation and my R squared are on two separate lines. This will also spread out my points a little bit and give me a nice easy to read graph. You can see we have a trend here, our slope's 0.876, our y-intercept is negative 3.93 times 10 to the negative 3, and our r-squared is 0.972, which is quite nice. That's a good correlation to our data here. It looks like we have one outlier at this point. Um, and that might be giving us some of our error, making our r-squared a little bit lower than it should be. So let's try graphing the mean absorbance versus the concentration. And we'll add some error bars on this time using our standard deviation. So I want these three columns, column A, G, and H. I'm just going to insert a blank graph because I'm going to tell it which, which columns I want. So we insert our graph. I'm going to move it down so I can see my data. <coughs> I'm going to scroll down, pick scatter plot. It likes when you add the series first. So our series, which is our y-axis, is going to be a mean absorbance. So I highlight it. Then I can add my x-axis concentration. Just one set of the concentrations will do. Good, and it's straight up plotting a scatter plot for me. You can see I have my horizontal and vertical grid lines. We need to put in our titles. So vertical axis here is our mean absorbance. Horizontal axis is concentration in moles per liter. And the chart title, just mean absorbance versus concentration works. Okay, now that that's done, go to our series. And we're going to click on our trend line. I'm going to change this one to pink. Show the R squared. Use the equation as our label. Maximize the plot area to put those on two separate lines. Okay, and you can see we can mess around with that all we want, make that plot nice and big. But I also want to add an error bar to this one because I've calculated standard deviation, which tells me the spread of my data. And this will put error bars on every single one of my points here. So I'm going to click error bars. I don't want a percent. I've actually calculated my standard deviation, so I'm going to put a constant there. I'm going to use the average or the mean standard deviation, 0 0.048. You can see I type that in and the error bars appear. It does mess with my vertical axis a bit, so I'm going to go type in the minimum of zero, because that's all I really care about in this graph. And there we are. We have a nice mean absorbance versus concentration. Uh, let's put these two things side by side so we can look at them and compare. So the equations of our line should be exactly the same. You see they are. R squared for the mean absorbance is a little bit higher, about 1% higher, or half a percent higher than the one where I plotted every data point. That's probably due to the um, outlier being gone. We've used statistics to get around that outlier, cooling our R-squared correlation coefficient. All right, there you go.